applied to our women here. So here we go, ladies, right there. Does it look all right? Is it good? Good? All right. Okay, we're, we're good. I'm ready now. All right. So it is so good to be with you. Thank you, Jerry, for your introduction. And uh, I would like, I'm going to turn it over to Jan, but before I do, I want to just say that Jan has been involved with First Fridays since its inception. She's on the board. Uh, she also heads up the annual women's conference. She's the assistant director of partner relations and marketing for Indiana Wesleyan University uh, National and Global Talent Ladder. Jan sits on a few other boards, including the executive board of the Better Business Bureau. Um, wow, as vice chair, she just, just does everything, doesn't she? She is the worship pastor at Love Church Ministries. She's also a musician and she's the wife of her associate pastor husband. She's a mom, a mentor, and a spiritual mom to many others. Jan, it's so good to have you with us today. Thank you for being here. Thanks so much, Rob. I think I almost got overwhelmed by listening to that intro. <laughs> <laughs> so I know we're talking about hats today and about the many different roles, yeah. um, you know, that, that we have just as being leaders. And um, by leaders, I mean that it, it's anyone. We're, no matter if we're leading from a role at our jobs where we're leading teams or perhaps managing people, um, even whether we do that or not, we are being leaders in some capacity. Um, just the fact that we're, we're wives or moms or sisters, we're leaders. And so <clears throat> I think there are several different ways that we can um, navigate through this difficult time. We know it's temporary, but how can we as leaders still believe in ourselves and lead with confidence? And I think there's a lot of different answers to that question, because right now we're leading from a different, a, a distance. But I think the other side to it is, if, if this has done anything for us, it's made us realize how important connections are. It's made us realize how important family is. It's made us realize how important friendships are. And so even though we wear a lot of leadership hats, um, and I love all of the hats today, that's really, really great. I'd like to talk about the friendship hat. So this is my friendship hat. And I'd like to really emphasize that, um, you know, it doesn't matter how we're wired, whether we're introverted, whether we're extroverted, um, we still need true friendships and we need to be true friends to other people in our lives. So I kind of thought, well, what type of hat would I wear if I were going out with a, a close friend or a couple of close friends? And so I grabbed this hat. I also grabbed my attitude purse because I'd, I'd have a purse that has a little attitude to it. And I think, I think Amy, this would look really good with your hat and <laughs> some, of the, <laughs> some of the others. And then I grabbed my mug because I love to drink coffee. I love to go out. Starbucks is, is a friend and an acquaintance um, of mine and so some of the other coffee houses. But as far as um, leadership, how can we as people right now going through this, we're, we're shut in, how can we still believe in ourselves and be confident? And I think for me, a lot of that is just friendships. That I form. We have to have those, those foundations of friendships in our lives. And so I've been blessed. I have five amazing friends. I have more than that, but I have five amazing, very, very close friends. They know probably too much about me, everything <laughs> there is to know about me. <clears throat> and um, they have literally transformed my life. And so Finding a sisterhood of leaders and friends who will lead you well, I think, is something that we can all aspire to. Um, there's some qualities of those friends um, <clears throat> that I think, you know, as I look through, it's really interesting. There's some common threads um, running through all of the friends that I have. And so interestingly enough, when I was thinking about what I was going to talk um, to you about today um, as far as like a, a different hat that I wear because I do wear this this friendship hat because I love it um, But the friends that I have there's some qualities and and I started to put together an acrostic I thought friend, you know at this we're faithful and I thought no <laughs> So I, I narrowed it down to like four. This is just an overview of four things that I've noticed um, in, in friendships today 
And so they all start with B. And I thought, how cool, because it, it's a bestie thing. So the first one um, is that a friend befriends you. And that befriending is not forced or should not be. Um, so they're not going to force you to be their friend. And, and they're not going to force a friendship on you. And so they're going to want to get to know you, to spend time with you. And I know with so many of us wearing um, different hats and having a full plate and feeling like we can't come up for air, um, it's, it's difficult. And even though we're shut in now, it's difficult. I, I have found that I'm, more, I'm busier than ever and I can't figure it out because yeah. I'm not in my car. I haven't driven my car for a long time. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> you know, it, it, it's a funny thing, but I think that friendship, and this is a quote that I came across, friendship is born at that moment when one person says to another, what? You too? I thought I was the only one. And that's a C.S. Lewis quote. And it's so true. So some of my closest friendships have come about through different associations. Um, two of my closest friends I met as a teenager. And one of them is my husband. He's, he was a high school sweetheart. But before we became romantically involved, <laughs> we were friends. Um, for years and we formed a, a really really good friendship and it was funny we argued like friends would and we bantered back and forth like friends would um, the other person was a caregiver to my mom my mom um, lived with my husband and me um, in her last years of life and um, I had a, a person come in and, and really really help my mom now I, I had known her before that but as I was working a lot of hours she was able to come in and help and we form this really wonderful friendship. And the neat thing for me today is I have the ability to connect with, with a friend mm. to talk about my mom because my mom moved here from California. So there weren't a lot of people that we had mutual friends with. And so this friend is, has just been a wonderful um, person in my life because she connects me with, with my mom who is uh, with the Lord now. So Another person was, I was in a rock band with back in the day, <laughs> and we, we became really, really good friends. Um, she's in Nicaragua now. She's a missionary, and we don't get to talk as often because I'm busy, she's busy, but um, it seems as if, and I, I'm sure many of you can relate, it seems as if when we talk, we pick up exactly where we left off. It's as if no time has gone by at all. Um, but the other person was introduced to me by another friend who kept saying to me, you two need to meet, you two need to meet. And she said this for years. And finally, I got to meet this other person she was talking about. And um, we became really, really close friends. So that's the first one. They befriend you. <clears throat> and it's a really, it's not a strained, not a strained relationship. Um, the second B is that they believe in you. And so mm -hmm. a true friend is going to see the treasure of who you are and they're going to value you for it. And I've learned, especially, you know, in a, in a marriage, I'm, my husband and I, we've been married for a long time and we have different, we have a lot of things in common, but we have different values. Some people value time alone more than engaging with others. Some people value um, different things and in, in friendships. And so true friends are gonna give each other space and grace when it comes to your own individual personal values. And so it's not that they're gonna not challenge you, but they're gonna give you your space and, and those things that are truly important to you. Um, true friends share with and they encourage each other. And so my husband um, gave me this book. I don't know if you can read it. It, it looks backwards on my screen, but <clears throat> my husband gave me this book years ago and it's Nice Girls Don't Get the Corner Office. And um, part of it was because he got tired of me coming home and complaining about some of the careers that I had. <laughs> and, and the other, the other part of it was he was he was really trying to encourage me because he believed in me and he believed in what I what I could do and how I could attain that. And so he, you know, my husband's the type of person he'll go and he will um, shop. He has a different shopping style. He'll go and he'll research and 
and find out what you know what's out there. And so he picked this book out for me, and it's been a really great, great book um, <clears throat> that I refer back to. But it's taught me a lot of lessons in the workplace that I don't think I would have learned otherwise. And it's a very straightforward, very open. I would recommend it. It's not the type of book you have to read page after page, and it has little snippets, and so you can jump around in it and you can refer back to it. So true friends believe in you. Um, the third thing is they bring out the best in you. Um, some, sometimes a person can bring out the worst in us. <laughs> and, but a true friend is going to bring out the, the best version of who you are. And as I love this Proverbs, it's Proverbs 27, 17. And it says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. And um, I've had a lot of situations um, where I've worked for employers and you have to take the assessment, you know, different types of personality assessments. Like one that's really popular is the MBTI or Myers-Briggs. And um, I, was, I shared an office with a person that had the, the complete opposite on the Myers-Briggs than I did. And at first there was a lot of tension between us, but in the end, and we even had to travel together, which was really, really kind of interesting, but we got to be um, really good friends and I had an appreciation for her when it was all said and done because I understood, understood her as a person. And so it's kind of getting to know who you are and sure. then who other people are. So it's, it's um, they're gonna cause you to believe beyond where you currently see yourself. And I think as far as like leading from confidence, and leading from that place of strength. I really believe that friends and friendships can bring that out in us because we don't have a mirror on ourselves or we really shouldn't have a mirror on ourselves all day long. Um, but our friends are gonna reflect um, and kind of reiterate back to us what they see in us and they're gonna see the treasure in us and who we are. And I've tried to surround myself with with those people that are going to help me to get beyond where I am today to where I need to be. And so a true friend is gonna motivate you to get there. They're really going to, to hone in on those things that they see and encourage you. And I'm gonna tell you, it's going to increase, if you've not experienced this, it's going to increase your confidence um, because you have a true friend who knows you, who who um, sees all your faults, your mistakes, your failures, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and they're still gonna motivate you to get there. So yeah. bring out the best in you. And, and so lastly, um, they're going to be honest with you. And so I have a really, really good friend and she's, she probably wins the Honesty and Transparency Award every time <laughs> and she's in my face honest but with love so that I can receive it and so um, a friend that's going to be honest is is I think something that we all can need to aspire to because it's kind of like when someone asks us well how are you doing to, if it's a friend how, well how are how are things going and yeah. if we keep saying fine it's wonderful. Well, without honesty and transparency, there's no intimacy. That friendship is going to be very shallow. And it's, it's not that we um, dwell on things that are, are negative and that's all we talk about, but sometimes there's a season where we're in that and we just have to, we have to talk and, and the only, the best that we can do is going to come out in a negative way. And a true friend is going to still give a listening ear and, um, that friendship is going to be strengthened because of, because there is that transparency there. And I have uh, friends, my, my five friends, including my husband, they will call me on the carpet when I need it. Um, they will challenge me in ways sometimes that make me angry. <laughs> but I know at the end of the day that um, it's what I need to hear and it's good medicine. And so um, there's a lot of Proverbs, by the way, um, in scripture on friendships. And here's another one. Yeah. It says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Yeah. And so 
I ponder on that because I've been wounded by, by my true friends, but they're faithful, <laughs> faithful wounds, yeah. um, which we all need. We all need that. And so I know that we're prone to feeling disconnected during this time. Um, I think we're zoomed out. <laughs> and Rob, I'm sorry, but you know, you're Rob coined a phrase called PTZD, <laughs> which is <laughs> which I think is so beneficial and so uh, apropos. But anyway, um, here are some alternatives, and these are things that I do with my friends um, to stay and stay connected because again, we're all busy. And we all need things that are going to um, help us to stay connected. So here's some other apps, Skype, and some of these you may have heard of, some of these you may not. Skype, FaceTime, Marco Polo, Magic Jack, Fiber, Boxer, and Google Voice. And so some of these I use with my friends where you can just record a short, quick video. And I'll usually say, hey girl, I'm just checking in. Wanna see how you're doing? Yeah, I'm busy at work. I have all these projects, but I'll catch up with you later. See ya. And sometimes getting a message like that is, is in, the encouragement that we need in the moment. I have another good friend that will call and will leave a prayer over a text message. And it, it's a voice. It's a voice text. And those are so encouraging. Um, so there's different ways um, that we can encourage each other during this time in lieu of, you know, going out to for coffee or other things that we normally do with friends yeah. so it does work <laughs> so i want to leave you with a few, few quotes on friendship um, this one is by mark twain keep away from those who try to belittle your ambitions mm. all people always do that but the really great make you believe that you too can become great and I love this one too. Lots of people want to ride with you in the limo, but what you want is someone who will take the bus with you when the limo breaks down. And that's Oprah Winfrey, I love that quote. And then lastly, um, there's nothing better than a friend unless it's a friend with chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite one. So thank you um, for just for being attentive and listening. I hope this was beneficial on some, some level to you. So at this time, I would love to introduce our next speaker, Amy Hanna. And beside um, being on the First Fridays board, Amy is also the chairperson for the Women's Network of Greater Fort Wayne, Inc. She's the founder and executive director of the RESPECT team. She's a Mary Kay consultant, a swim instructor, a leader for bring it, push it, own it, a wife to a local youth pastor, a mom to two teenage girls, and a mentor to 22 high school girls at her church. Let's give a welcome to Amy Hanna. Woo! All right. <laughs> welcome, Amy. <laughs> hey, Jen. Thanks. Um, quick question. Are we going to do question answer? Oh. Or now, or do we you know what until the very end? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we can we can take questions now if, if uh, there's questions. I can unmute everybody. We have a small enough group. I can unmute everybody, and then people can ask their questions to Jan. Let's, yeah, let's do that. Just okay. to, just so we yeah. don't forget what she talked about because it was such good information. Okay. 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 Great. Okay, so okay, move your feet so I can put my feet up. Yeah. If you have a question for Jan, shoot. So I have a question. Yes. What do you think is the best way to spend time with our friends since we're social Yeah, that that's a great that's a great question. Um, I feel like I've missed the mark on a lot of that because um, just being busy and having some things on my plate, I don't get an opportunity, but I think the little things go a long way. Um, I think just doing little things to make our friends aware that we're thinking of them and that we are, um, you know, just, just wanting to connect with them. Sometimes that's not possible. Um, there can be seasons where things are busier at work or things are busy at 
busier at home. And so I think the little things, um, I also, you know, um, I also like getting, like I got a card, believe it or not, I got a letter in the mail from a friend. It was like, what? <laughs> I was so shocked. I was like, oh my goodness, I haven't got, but you know, it's old fashioned compared to the plethora of ways that we communicate today, but it was just so neat. It was like, I felt like um, really special that this person took the time to hand write something out, put it in the mail and send it. So um, I think there's, there's ways, um, you know, technology of course, but even our, our phones and sometimes we have to ask them what's the best way or what's the best time to connect with you. That can be key too. Um, I've done some early, early morning meetings um, or, or just connections with friends early in the morning, because that's the best time for them. Yeah, great question. And I love, I'm looking at the, the comments. Um, Peggy Sue Wells put, fine, it's an acrostic for freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. And I think the intent was stay away from that. <laughs> Thank you, Peggy Sue. <laughs> Other questions for Jan. Question. Yeah, yeah I, I have a question. Do you yeah, think yeah. that um, sometimes people overcomplicate friendship, and making it more difficult to have a good, wholesome relationships, and we don't keep it simple enough? Yes, yes, I do. And I, you know, it's funny you, you say that. I've experienced that. I had a really good friend um, years ago. And our values were different. And so this is where I learned about values. Her value was a friendship is um, talking on the phone every day um, and making contact every day and sharing everything that there is to share. And that was not my value. My value was um, more instead of the, the quantity, it was the quality. And so um, I think sometimes if a person has different value, if that's what their value is for friendship, that's kind of the angle that they're going to come, come into it as. Um, and so, yes, it, some people can complicate it more than it needs to be. And I like easy on every level. And so it's kind of like um, coming into the friendship and then sharing what some of those expectations are up front, I think, can really, really help and help strengthen or weaken the relationship. Great question. Okay. Okay. If there's no one else, I'm gonna yes. go jump into this. Yes. <laughs> Great job, Jan. That well, was very well done. So, um, like Jan said, my name is Amy Hanna. And I wear a lot of hats, not just my Britney Spears hat that I wear today, just for Jerry. <laughs> but um, I, I do a lot of different things in our community, but I would say probably the hardest thing that I've been doing recently is this balancing work life with mom life and with husband life. It's just a little bit different. And so one of the things that I have learned is to try to find my own space within the household. So my husband is a youth pastor. So he is working from home. He's doing Zoom meetings. He's doing Instagram lives. He's doing Facebook lives. He's doing YouTube lives. Pretty much anything to connect with our teenagers at this point. My kids are e-learning, so they're also doing a bunch of Zoom meetings. Um, I'm doing Zoom meetings and podcasting and, again, Instagram Lives and Facebook Lives, and so there is a lot of technology happening within my household, and we used to, at one point, be all in the same house or all in the same room. The living room tends to be the place that we all go to, but for all of us to be in the living room trying to do Zoom meetings, it's just not gonna work. So we had to figure out where our own space was. So for me, I actually just finished, almost done. I'm sitting in it right now. We're turning our guest bedroom into my office, which is something that I have wanted to do forever. But I just never felt like, you know, I, I didn't really feel like it was something that was necessary because 
pretty much I was working from the living room, but now it's necessary. So we have turned our guest bedroom into my office. My husband now works in the basement or on the back porch. Um, my kids go to their rooms for their Zoom meetings. And so we've just really figured out how to find our own space within the household. I have a really good friend that she does all of her meetings within her closet in her bedroom <laughs> because she has little kids and they just, they come in. I have big kids and they come in. And so she just goes into her closet and she shuts the door and she kind of hides in the closet and that's how she does everything. And so it's, it's really whatever works for you and um, whatever works for your family too. But carving out your own space during this time is going to be very important, especially if you're working from home. So that is something that we have learned. Um, besides finding your own space, also setting a family schedule. So that has been a really big thing for our family. My husband and I, we used to do a Sunday night business meeting. So we would sit down and we would get out the calendar and we'd say, okay, I've got this meeting on this night or I'm gonna be at this place on this night. And uh, it just really worked for our schedule because we could figure out who was cooking dinner and we could figure out who was picking up the kids from school and all those different things. So even though we're all home now, we still have to have a family business meeting. Now we've included our kids into that business meeting and it goes something like this. Mom's doing a Zoom meeting at 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Nobody can come into the office. Stay very quiet. I don't wanna hear screaming, I don't wanna hear fighting and I don't wanna hear the dog barking. <laughs> so, so it's just talking with each other and saying, here's what my schedule looks like. How can I help you and how can you help me too? So um, one of my other daughters, she's a sophomore in high school, so she is 16. And she had a presentation this morning for one of her classes and that was very important to her to make sure that everything was quiet within the household. Even though she's up in her bedroom and the door is closed, we wanted to respect that. And so being able to have those conversations and knowing what your schedule is, I think, is very important and it avoids the entire um, I call it the zoom peek around you know and you're in the process of a zoom meeting and someone opens the door and they kind of peek they peek around like can they hear me can they see me <laughs> and so it avoids the zoom peek around and it avoids the loud voices in the background uh, when you're trying to do meetings so the third thing is that your workspace can include your family. So carving out a time where you can work together. So my girls doing their homework, my husband and I answering our emails, those are all things that we can all come to the living room and we can work together. And so finding that opportunity where everyone can kind of sit together. If it's nice outside, going outside and sitting on the back porch and everybody finishing homework or um, answering emails or simple things like that too. And then the last thing is keeping your priorities in check. So on my new desk, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it just says faith, family, and friends. So this is just a good reminder to me and anytime I walk into my my new office <laughs> that it's this is what my priorities are it's about my faith it's about my family and it's about my friends my work is very important but if I have just spent six hours in my office with my office door closed because I this was yesterday I had five zoom meetings yesterday I was completely zoomed out and I was tired and I was grumpy and it was really because I had spent almost six hours sitting behind a closed door. I hadn't talked to my family. I hadn't spent time outside of this room. Before this whole Zoom thing happened, I would be getting out. I would be talking to my kids. I would be driving somewhere, something like that, going outside, even just taking a, a moment and stepping outside is very important too. So if you're working from home, which most of us are, that's just some quick little tips to help you to balance the hat of the working wife or the working mom or just the working woman. 
um, to help you out. So, any questions that you might have for me? I'm looking in the chat too. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get so busy you lose the family. Thanks, Mike. Perfect. Hey, Amy. Yeah. I, I know you are one who's always out in the community, especially here in Fort Wayne. How has it been for you to running your own company and ministry, not being able to get out with those folks on a regular basis? What is how have you had to pivot during this time to make those changes to keep that balance that they know you uh, still care about them and they're, that you're here for them? Yeah, it's been a lot of pivoting, um, a lot of a lot of Zoom calls, um, a lot of FaceTimes, talking, especially to my uh, teenage girls that I mentor out in the community, having to talk to them on the phone and texting them, whereas before I would just say, hey, let's hang out or, you know, come on over and we'll go for a bike ride. And so things are a little bit different now. So it's a lot of texting, a lot of FaceTime, a lot of calling. Um, as far as the business side of things, the respect team were doing presentations. In fact, right before this started, I had a speaker who was texting me saying, I can't get into the Zoom meeting. And she was supposed to present for Carroll High School today. And so, um, so it, you know, it's wearing the work hat. And, and so we're trying to help our presenters out too. So, so we're doing virtual presentations for our schools and um, lots of Instagram connections with our kids. And yeah, so we've we've learned how to pivot. Some of those things I'll take with me outside of this whole social distancing thing. Um, some of those things I am really excited to just check and say, okay, I get to go see people again because my extrovert side just I miss I miss tangible faces. I like seeing faces, but I miss tangible faces. And so, um, so that part I'm I'm looking forward to. Yeah, Amy, can, can you talk, um, I love what you had to say. I think it's really great that you, you're making space, like you're being intentional to do that. Can you talk a little bit about like the boundaries sometimes, you, you alluded to it, um, the boundaries in like the family dynamic to kind of retrain everyone to, to know, okay, when I'm sitting in this chair, when I'm in this room, it means this. Can you kind of talk to that a little bit more? Because that can sometimes be difficult in light of um, our circumstances. It's very difficult if you have little kids, for sure, because little ones, they don't always understand that concept because you're in the house and they can get right to you unless you have like a locked door, you know, and then they're pounding on the door. <laughs> Let me in. So um, it is difficult when you have little ones, I think, with having teenagers within the household, that conversation is so much easier. Um, just because I can say, hey, I'm, I'm going to be in the room. And if the door is closed, typically they know if the door is closed, I'm doing something. If the door is open, come right in. Um, so that's kind of how we've worked out things within our household. Um, I cannot imagine navigating this time with little kids i cannot those of you that have little ones i don't i have no idea how you are doing that so sarah hopefully you're going to speak a little bit to that because uh, i think that would be helpful too um but yeah i would say as far as like with my husband and i learning how to have that time together still has been very important um, we used to have date night every week now it's kind of like let's go to the basement and watch a movie together. <laughs> and so um, it's a little bit different. We did last night, he said, hey, you wanna go jump in the truck and drive around for an hour? Yeah, so that's <laughs> what we did. <laughs> so we jumped in the truck and drove around for an hour. Um, so sometimes you, you have to pivot and um, make sure things are, are still functioning within your household, with your family, but also with your work life too. Amy, Tara asked a great question. Uh, what tips do you have as a leader to acknowledge the struggles you're experiencing while maintaining a high level of empathy and sympathy to those that you lead? Oh, Tara, 
such a hard question, girl. Tara, Tara and I, side note, I have known Tara since she was in middle school. <laughs> <laughs> we have been very good friends for a long time. And, um, and I would say that I'm kind of stepped into like a mentor role for her too, which has been really special. Um, so that has been really fun too. So I would say authenticity is really important when you're a leader and you're struggling with something. It's okay for you to be authentic and say, today has been a hard day. Um, last night I had a conversation with one of my colleagues and um, we were supposed to have a Zoom meeting last night, but after so many Zoom meetings throughout the day, I just said, I, I can't, <laughs> like, I am, I am burnt out. I, can we take a rain check? Can we connect tomorrow? And she said, yeah, of course. And so I think that it's important for you to be authentic and say, you know, I want to be here for you. I want to, I want to have these conversations with you, um, to be empathetic, to be sympathetic for people who are going through hard things, but you also have to care for yourself too. So you have to know what, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. And it's okay to just say, sometimes I need a break. And um, I think sometimes the best leaders are the leaders who know that about themselves and aren't afraid to say something too. Thanks, Tara. Other questions for Amy? Um, I have a question. So now that everyone, you know, most people are working from home and having to work with pets and kids, do you think this time at all will change how women are seen in the workforce? I know, you know, it's always been a, a balancing act and friends talk about how hard it is to have, you know, be a mom and have, you know, and it was one funny when somebody brought a baby to a conference once and we were all excited about it. Like that was a big breakthrough, but do you think this time will really change that? I'm hoping that it highlights what we do as women, because we do, we juggle, we wear so many hats, we juggle so many different things. And I think because we're having these meetings within our real life, and we have kids that walk in and we have husbands that walk in and we have dogs that bark and you know those kinds of things i think it, it it makes us as women more accessible i think it helps us to realize oh yeah that person that i saw up on the stage speaking she doesn't have it all together <laughs> she's a real person too and so i think it highlights us as as women and hopefully it helps people to understand how strong we actually are as women too. So yes, I do hope it changes things for us, but I hope it changes us in a good way, for sure. Okay, well, I am going to introduce Sarah. So uh, 2019 a 40 Under 40 award winner, Sarah Arnold was born and raised in Northeast Indiana, having worked in the communications field since 2008, Sarah has learned the ins and the outs of both traditional and digital marketing. Sarah spends much of her free time volunteering in her communities, serving on boards and committees for various nonprofit organizations, including the New Haven Community Foundation, which I'm going to brag on her. She didn't put this in her bio, but she just got voted in as the chair of that. So that's kind of cool. And, <laughs> woo -woo, and at first Fridays for being. Family time is most important to her with her husband, Coley, and their two daughters. In addition to owning and operating Socially Seasoned, Sarah is also an adjunct faculty at Indiana Wesleyan University, teaching communication courses online. Please welcome Sarah Arnold. Woohoo! Thank you, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, it's so nice to be with you all today. Um, it's a special day in our household. It is my oldest daughter's birthday. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about her in a minute, but uh, I keep seeing a, a common theme on social media that's, how are you surviving this pandemic? And what I want to talk about is how you can thrive during this pandemic. We don't need to just survive, we need to thrive. And so how are we pivoting and um, and dealing with that in our lives, every aspect of our lives, family, uh, work, friendships, uh, that my lovely 
co-hosts have, have talked about today. So I want to start with the definition of thrive. It is to grow or develop well or vigorously and to progress toward or realize a goal. And the synonyms of thrive are to prosper and flourish. And I love that word flourish, especially mm. right now as we look out on our spring landscaping and we see the tulips coming up and the daffodils have bloomed and just, um, Taking a minute, uh, a couple days ago, I walked around our property. I just needed to get some fresh air. And I thought, wow, what it means to flourish. When we look at the bulbs that are just starting to peek through the mulch or the grass, and we see the stems grow, and we see these beautiful flowers, these buds, burst into life. And how cool that is, right? Um, and that's what I think of when I think of thriving, because um, especially when we have maybe uh, some crazy winter conditions in Northeast Indiana, can I get an amen? Um, our weather's been crazy. But um, thinking about, you know, snowing in April and frosting just what this last week, um, these beautiful flowers are still thriving. So um, I think that it's important to think back upon um, surviving versus thriving and how we can do that in our lives during this crazy time. Um, so first I wanna talk a little bit about uh, intentional scheduling and how that has helped me personally and my life, um, family and career blending together um, using, you know, specific calendar apps like uh, Google or Calendly, which is an app where you can um, basically plug in when you're available and allow for other people to schedule appointments with you so that you don't have a whole bunch of back and forth emails. Um, that is an awesome app to utilize if you aren't yet. Again, that's Calendly. Um, awesome. Thank you, Jerry. So um, another thing I want to talk about is prioritizing. So I was looking up, you know, what are some good quotes on priorities? And I, I came across this one that I really love. It says, your priorities aren't what you say they are. They are revealed by how you live. And I love what, what Amy touched on with her sign, you know, just to remind her on her desk every day when she looks at it, what is the most important to me and how am I going to prioritize my schedule and my time so that those remain the most important things to me? Not what I say they are. I say I'm family first, but how much time am I actually spending with my family each day? Um, so I really love that quote about prioritizing. And then also, Thinking about priorities and all of the tasks that we have uh, to do, and maybe more during this pandemic, we think about what am I best at? Um, and I read this book. Now, this book is called Born to Build. Um, I read this through our Greater Fort Wayne, Inc. Bridge Program, and it's by Jim Clifton. So it's, you know, a Gallup. Um, if you've done the Clifton Strengths Finder, same guy. It's called Born to Build. Um, and it's just an awesome book to read through and then take the assessment at the end to figure out what your top talents are when you are building something new. So specifically for me, obviously I'm a, I'm a business owner, so I have built a business. So how are those um, talents that I possess going to help me in owning and building and operating a business? So with the Greater Fort Wayne Inc. Bridge program, we took the assessment and we figured out what our top talents were. And for me, and we wrote this, we wrote them on this name tag. We had this during our training session. And for me, my top talent or my alpha role is a conductor. So when I think about, okay, well, what are all those other talents that I may not have scored as high on? How can I give those? tasks to other people. So that may be um, within my tribe. 
That may be my parents. How can they help me? That may be my husband. What is he really good at that I'm not so good at, right? And how can that help our life? Um, in, within my business, what about my account manager? What is she really good at that she can take on that might help me? Um, and it sounds a little bit selfish, but it's not. When you think about prioritizing, what are you great at? you are going to naturally excel at those things. And so if you can build a team around you who has other talents that they're really great at, that you might not be so great at, that's gonna build the best team and it's going to be the best for every single person. So I've really, um, I recommend this book. I have really taken to heart um, the talents and the things that I have learned from that book to help business life, as well as family life, as well as home life. So talking a little bit about that, um, my, uh, my roles obviously are, you know, business owner, wife, um, mommy, um, volunteer, all of those things. And really early on in my career, um, I like to say that I was a yes girl because any opportunity that came my way, I said yes to. I'm like, oh, this could help my career. I'm just gonna say yes. Uh, without really thinking through the ramifications of taking on more and more and more and how that was going to affect the rest of my life and again, back to the priorities. So if I took on all these roles or I volunteered with all these things, how much time was gonna be spent left with my family, who is, you know, the most important thing. So um, uh, that kind of really hit me hard when I found out that we were expecting our first daughter. And I was on all these boards and all these committees, and all of a sudden I really had to take a step back and think about, okay, what's gonna happen when this baby comes? Um, what am I gonna do? I don't think I can continue to you know, do all of these roles and all of these tasks when she comes along. Um, and so, you know, I thought about it throughout my pregnancy and, and decided that I would have to drop off of some of those things. Um, but really, I should have thought about that previous to that even happening. So again, going back to what are my priorities. Um, so when our daughter was born, she, um, she was totally healthy. And um, everything was fine, had a great pregnancy. The next day, the nurse came in and took her vitals and realized that her heart rate was really, really low, um, especially for a newborn. And so, um, you know, called the doctor and she was whisked up to the NICU and uh, was diagnosed with a potentially fatal heart disease, a heart condition. And um, so we spent uh, her first week in the NICU and every day they came in and they took tests. They took an echocardiogram and an EKG and with a squirmy newborn that was very difficult and there was lots of crying and there was lots of stress. And I thought, wow, you know, I cannot believe all that's happening. Um, I'm glad that I had my priorities straight because this is my number one now. And um, I'm happy to say that by the end of the week, she was completely cured. Um, and it's, it's kind of crazy to think now that today is her seventh birthday <laughs> and uh, all that has changed within those seven years. But that was the moment where everything became real. What are my priorities? And that trickled into what do I want to do with my career? What do I want to do with my life? Um, now that I know that I have this miracle child in my care, and that is essentially why I started my own business. So uh, thinking back to what are those priorities? Who is my crew and my tribe and how can they help me? How can we build this team around our, our uh, life to help us? And what are those expectations? Um, are there any questions? I know that was <laughs> a lot thrown at you. I had put one in the chat, Sarah, um, 
a minute ago just so I didn't forget what my question was. But I said, do you think it's equally important to prioritize what you need to stop doing first to allow more space in your life to start doing what you really should be? Yes, that's an awesome question. And you are so right on with that. What do we need to say no to, right? So the power of no. Um, and, and also, you know, going back to, okay, what are those most important things in my life? What do I want to spend the most time on when I look back 10 years from now? Am I going to be happy with those choices that I made? So yeah, that's, that's awesome. I love that. And now I will say now I have two kids. <laughs> so age seven today and age three, and I have just slowly, just this last year, started to trickle in some more of those volunteer opportunities. So it's taken some time, you know, to get back to that now that they're in school. Other questions? Sarah, can you speak a little bit to how you're balancing life with young ones? And sure. Life? Yeah, so that kind of goes back to the building your, your team around you. So um, fun fact, we have a little compound here in New Haven going on. <laughs> My parents live um, across our lane from us. We're on some acreage and um, we decided, some people may not agree, but we discussed with them um, at the beginning of this whole pandemic that since they had been watching our kids, we've been around them every day, we're going to keep doing that. Um, now, uh, before the pandemic and for the last seven years, my mom has been watching my girls, um, every Wednesday. So every Wednesday has been my meetings day, my, if I need to go out and about and have an appointment, Wednesday has been my day for that. So we have continued on with that. Um, I will say that that is a huge, enormous blessing and help. And I know that not everyone, um, gets to have that. So. Um, between that and then my husband is also working from home. Um, we have from the beginning kind of constituted this schedule to where um, I'm waking up early and getting some work done on the computer um, before the girls wake up. And then again at rest time around like one to three, um, they can watch a movie, they can play games, they can do what they want, but they can't bother mommy. <laughs> So the office door is closed. <laughs> you know, Sarah, um, we've only got a few minutes left. This has been wonderful. I've just been kind of saying nothing because there's been so much coming in. I, I'm having a hard time taking it all in, but I, I am gleaning so much from just the wisdom of uh, you three wonderful ladies and, and uh, leaders in our community. But I, I have a, uh, just a last question before Jerry closes everything out. Um, for all three of you, if you want to respond accordingly, um, we've talked a lot about, you know, the priorities, uh, making sure things are in order, having certain schedules in place, um, having friendships and structured relationships in our life that will, not only can we seed into, but they seed into us as well. Um, in regards to life, both personal and life, business, which all three of you are very enmeshed in both of those. Um, what would you say, obviously, when we, when we, when you've been talking, you've been talking about a lot about relationships and part of that is delegation. And so I, I would, I would ask, uh, what do you believe the key to good delegation is? Hmm. Question. I think it um, has to do a lot with going back to figuring out who is good at what. And so knowing the talents and strengths of other people, if it's something that they're great at or that they may want to grow in that area, I think it's a great idea to give them that, that task and ask them you know, if they would be willing to take that on. Yeah, that's a great answer, Sarah. Um, I, I also think that it's um, like delegating, it's, uh, it's not admitting that you can't do it because you're not capable. Um, I used to think that those two were synonymous. Well, I'm not capable of doing this. Well, I don't want to admit that. Well, I'm going to do it myself. You know? it's, it's really like you're saying, Sarah, it's really um, finding out the strengths of others. And a lot of time, it can be time motivated. Um, 
you know, I don't have time to do this, but here's someone that I know can do just a good of job or, or a lot of times better. And it, it's letting go of that. So that's great. Yeah. Letting go. That was so key. Thank you. Both. And I would just add to um, Anna actually put it down here in the chat that she said to know your own strengths and then to also empower other people to excel. So yeah. that is mm. one thing that I am super passionate about. I love putting people in positions where it's like, you know what, you can do this. I know that you think you can't do this, but I, I <laughs> truly believe that you can. So let me give you this opportunity that you can go up on the stage and speak, or you can go onto the radio, or yeah. you can go on to TV or whatever. Um, those different things are that I typically could go and do, but giving those other people those opportunities to do that, it's just so much fun because really we're raising the next generation of leaders when we're doing that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I know we're Beautiful. just about out of time and we are so grateful to uh, everyone who could join us and, and I want to be not the first or the last to say this, but our three ladies that are on our First Fridays team are extremely valuable to us. I have learned so much from each of them and uh, we are trying to equip all three of them and as they've equipped our team just to become better. So ladies, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for your leadership <laughs> on First Fridays. Um, love the hats for everybody. I've worn several. <laughs> um, so, but uh, again, we thank everybody for joining us for our Lunch with a Leader series, and we hope everyone can continue with us uh, in May for our Engage 2020. So until then, on behalf of First Fridays, we'll see everybody soon. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bye, guys. God bless. Uh, thanks. <laughs>